Holy One, be with us in our darkness. Shelter our broken hearts. Ease our grief. Envelop our sorrow. Strengthen us in our losses. Give us wisdom to bear both dismay and hope. To face our brokenness without blame. In our fear without despair. Give us grace to meet evil with goodness. Give us courage to hold the fearful, to heal the wounded, and to work for justice. Give us the heart to be peacemakers in a troubled world. God of mercy, give us mercy. Sustain us with your love. Raise us from our graves so we may live courageous and merciful lives. Here and now, for these people, may your love prevail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Stone Village, and happy Sunday. I hope that all of you are well and safe in this world. All is well in my world. Over the next few weeks, I am going to be offering you personal reflections, not traditional sermons. Uh, that will lead us into the month of September. So, to be clear, this is not a traditional sermon. It is a personal reflection. So, the Lord be with you. Now let's pray. Prepare us, O God, to hear your word through the scripture of this day. Confront us with your claim upon our lives. Clarify the choices we must make if our lives are to have meaning and purpose. Help us to respond to the one who came as the bread of life, so we may know life at its fullest and at its very best. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The reading today is from John chapter 11, verses 32 through 36. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus wept, and so did he. Not with Jesus, of course. This man wept in my office on Wednesday. I was moments away from leaving the church when I heard someone knocking on the front door. I assumed it was someone arriving late for the ID ministry. And for a split second, I considered exiting the back door of the church, bypassing the stranger at the front door. Yet I am constantly haunted by WWJD. <laughs> what would Jesus do? Sometimes I really would like to work for someone else. So I begrudgingly walked through the church, preparing myself for the person's explanation as to why they relate and why they must receive assistance today. As I approached the door, I could see the person was a man, who I initially classified as elderly, yet would later learn was much closer to my own age. The winds of life had eroded the man's stature, dulled the light in his eyes, lessened the vibrancy of his skin, aging the man years beyond his true age. I opened the door, spoke salutations, and asked how I could help. The man asked if I was the pastor, and if he could speak with me, ensuring me he wouldn't take up much of my time. He simply needed someone to talk to. Hesitantly, I agreed. My hesitation was born of not knowing the man. Plus, I was alone in the church. Yet, WWJD. So, I led the man through the church into my office, 
offered him a chair and sat down across from him. Once settled, I invited him to begin speaking. Honestly, he didn't say much. He tried, he really did try. Yet every time he attempted to speak, tears overcame his words. His body shook, perhaps due to the internal struggle deep within to gain some degree of composure over himself. I don't know. So I sat silently, bearing witness to this man's tears, wondering what storms he had weathered in life that led to this moment of uncontrollable release. I also wondered if his tears were a means of confession, or was he simply seeking comfort? Then again, maybe he just needed someone to bear witness to his life's pain and rage. I don't know. I do know tears, though. You know tears. Jesus knew tears. As illustrated in today's story, Lazarus, the beloved brother of Mary and Martha, and friend of Jesus, had died. Certainly one could rush to the miracle of resurrection, Lazarus's return to life. Yet I prefer to pause at the shortest sentence in the Bible. Jesus wept. Because life overwhelms us. Death overwhelms us. And tears are the liquid equalizers of human life. No one can avoid them, regardless of one's status or categorization, rich or poor, male or female, non-binary or trans, gay or straight, young or old, black, brown or white, spiritual, religious, or atheist. In the best and worst of times in life, tears. On the day I made my decision to leave King Avenue and build Stone Village, I can vividly recall weeping privately in my home. Was I happy with my decision or was I sad? Maybe both. It was both. My tears that day were my confession speaking the truth of the uncertainty, the hopes and the fears, knotted like a ball of yarn within me over the impending and unknown journey before me. I don't know about you, yet I'm grateful the gospel writer of John illustrated that the child of Mary and Joseph, the kid with the sketchy birth story, future Messiah, and companion of outcasts, was overcome by a friend's death. Imagine your belief in Jesus, your willingness to follow his impossible way without the sentence, Jesus wept. I don't know about your faith life, yet I know my faith life would be less. Life overcomes all of us. After 20 minutes of uncontrollable sobbing, the man in my office wiped his tears, thanked me, stood, and left the church. After his departure, I sat silently in my office with tears in my eyes and wondered, did I help him? I don't know. All I know for certain is that I was there for and with him, bearing witness to his life. Spoken to me through trembling hands, mumbled words, in uncontrollable tears. And I knew in that moment, it was a sacred moment for both of us. Every tear we shed is a mirror, 
a reflection of our interior life. Joy, loss, sorrow, transformation, the death of the old, the birth of the new. So always pay attention to your tears. For tears remind us in good times and in bad times, we all need comfort. Thanks be to God. Amen. I give thanks to God for each of you. And I pray this day you bear witness to the love of God in this world. Bear witness to the love of God in this world. So those to whom love is a stranger, they will find in you a generous and loving friend. In the name of Christ Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. I love you, stoners. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Bye.